Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. In today's episode, we're focusing on movement drills for mixed martial arts. With the smaller glove, your distance control has to change slightly. So this workout, I'm gonna give you five rounds to be able to move around the cage smoothly and safely. Bazooka Joe Baltalini. Today's workout is all about movement patterns for mixed martial arts. I say mixed martial arts, but the same principles apply whether you're in kickboxing or any other martial art. It's all about distance control. It's really important that we understand that MMA has a small glove and there are differences from kickboxing. In kickboxing, you have the bigger glove and you can use your shell to defend punches. But in MMA now, you need to keep a little bit more space because of that glove size and you need to use your parry and control your distance. So these drills today are all about letting you keep that space so you don't get hit with those punches. You don't want to ever get caught in MMA getting hit with punches and hiding behind your shell. Your feet have to move, you do need to control your opponent's hand and you need to keep your distance. Round one for today's workout is called box stepping with a gallop step. And those who understand simple box stepping, we never wanna cross our feet. So if I'm stepping to the right, my back foot comes, and then my front foot follows. Going forward, front foot first, back foot follows. Going backwards, my back foot, then my front foot follows. So you can see now how I can travel a little bit faster with the gallop step in any direction that I'm doing. If I'm simple stepping, which is nice. I can calculate my stepping very precise. Say the shot comes, I might have to gallop quickly. Say I punch and now they exit, I gallop to close distance quickly and then now I'm in a nice kick range on their exit. Boom, perfect head kick from there. I don't wanna sit here for too long and then have to push. So I'll come in, boom. Okay, I can mix in a little bit more of that explosiveness. Okay, so galloping with box stepping. Round two, we're working on our triangle step. It's about attacking forward, exiting, and then circling out. It's one of the safest footworks you can use in combat sports because it lets you attack and gets you to move out safely. So what you wanna do is I place one cone as the center and that's my opponent. You can put a stand, a bag, anything that shows where your opponent will be standing. So what I wanna do is I wanna be able to enter, exit out, and now circle and create. And then I come in again, exit out, and circle. If my opponent's not moving fast, I could attack and then slowly step out, right? Just like our box stepping. Now, if I'm attacking and they come back quickly, see how I use that gallop step now that we did in round one, all right? So then you're just gonna follow this pattern. If you wanna mix your hands, you can as well. But you can see every time I move, my hands are up and I'm creating different angles. And I want you to change the direction when you do it. So if I come in here, throw an attack, I build out an exit, I circle to the right. Okay, I come back in, throw an attack, come back to the left. So you wanna change up the direction to confuse your opponent. One right, one left, two left, two right. Change it up to always keep your opponent guessing and create different angles. So remember, when you do this drill, take away the freezes. I don't want you to get stuck here or stuck here again and then have to kind of be caught up in tripping over your feet. Fluidity and smoothness in the footwork. Round three is about using our shifts and our back step. That's the fastest way to move forward with our shift and the fastest way to move backwards is with our back step. So let's look at that first, all right? So starting from my center cone, I'm gonna use a nice gallop into a shift. When I get to that point of that cone, I could attack with the combinations or visualize defending and now I have to retreat back. So what I like to do is I like to start the back step with a gallop. I find when I'm sitting here heavy on that lead leg, it's a little slower for me to step back into a back step right away. So what I like to do is I gallop before I step, and now you can see I safely exited with the fastest time possible. So the drill is shifting forward. Say I end up in a southpaw as I get to that point. It's okay, I'm gonna throw a combination from whatever stance I'm in. After the combination, I back step out, and now I'm here at my center cone. So forward and backwards using shift and the back step. 
Now when you get to this center cone, I do want you to throw a combination on the back step as well, because that's gonna visualize you pulling somebody in, draw attacking. From this center cone, I want you to use a quarter turn. Boom, now I can do the same drill to the other cone. Attack, come back here, boom, attack, move. All right, so here is where you can get creative with your footwork. All right, you can mix in kicks, punches, and different angles as well. Remember, attack, exit out, attack on the center cone, quarter pivot, quarter turn, attack to another cone. Just like we did in the last round with the triangle stepping, it's about confusing your opponent, trying to create different angles, different footwork patterns. Round four, it's all about visualization. We need to visualize being a pressure fighter. We also have to visualize being more of a movement fighter. And we have to understand that in mixed martial arts and combat sports, we need to control the environment we're in. Whether it's a cage or a ring, you have to be able to shuffle laterally to control your opponent. So this is the round that's gonna help you. So let's visualize first being a pressure fighter, which means I need to close distance to my opponent. So as a pressure fighter, to close distance, I'm using that shift we worked on. I get to that cone, I could attack. Now you have to think, what is my opponent going to do when I pressure them against the cage? They have two directions to go. So from this stance here, I'm going to move into a lateral. So say my opponent moves this direction, I can stay in front of them. If they go the other way, I shuffle to the other direction and I could attack anytime I want. So this is using lateral shuffling to kind of track my opponent, very important key. So now visualize your opponent attacking you and you might want to move and evade. So what's gonna happen now, if they, I throw attack, they want to come at me, I use the back step as they pressure me, I want to move. So now I lateral shuffle to a different position. So you can see now my opponent is following me where I'm bringing them. If I need to adapt again, I turn back into a pressure fighter. Here, I want to keep control. I want to attack. Now I want to evade. Stay long, move, okay? Attack on different angles, forward pressure. So you can see I'm visualizing being a pressure fighter versus evading shots and using different types of movement. As you get more advanced in these footwork patterns, you can also start mixing in feints before you enter. Okay. Round five, it's all about freestyle. Fighting isn't perfect. You have to be able to change little angles, change things on the fly, and to be able to adapt. So this round, play around with the different concepts. Put yourself in a fight situation and play it out. Be a pressure fighter, be a movement fighter, use quarter turns and practice the different footworks. But just make sure you go in with a concept, an idea, some footwork to work on. Don't just go in there randomly. Visualize an attacker, move your feet, keep your distance. There you have it, five different rounds to work different movement patterns for mixed martial arts. Remember, it's about not getting stuck in that quicksand. You wanna be able to move your feet, hit and exit, right? The moment you get stuck and you get caught in that shell, that's where trouble happens. You're gonna to have to rely on your clinch or takedowns at that point. But if you're a striker and you wanna keep space, these footwork patterns are important. Remember, you need to build up to them, practice them on a regular basis so they become second nature. You don't wanna be in a fight, get stuck somewhere, and then get hit. You just have to find that fluidity, just like your combinations. When you first start punching, everything is robotic and stiff. Eventually, you get that fluidity, and that's what we need in our footwork. Keep your calves strong, keep your feet moving, keep that distance control, and you're gonna find a lot of success in your MMA fights.